What's good YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dylan and today we're going to change the engine oil on a BMW X3. For those of you guys that are looking for specifications, this is a 2013 BMW X3 xDrive 28i model F25 with the engine N20. I know it's a mouthful to say, but apparently it actually matters uh, when you're looking for pieces. So make sure you do your research to figure out which car you have. So up front, I don't really know much about cars. Everything I've learned is from my brother-in-law and online. So I will share you the resources that I have found below that have helped me out. Um, but I just wanted to make this video to make sure that I consolidated all of the tips and tricks. And hopefully when I do it again next time, uh, it'll help me keep that in my memory. Nonetheless, we'll just get right into it and we'll show you how to change the engine oil on the X3. Now, first off, you need to be able to get underneath the car. So you got to prop it up somehow. You can either use a jack and jack stands to raise up your car or what I've done here is actually used Rhino ramps. They're supposedly support up to three tons. I've used them on the Mini Cooper, but with this car, it felt a little scary because the drain plug is so far into the machine. So the next time I'm doing this, I'm probably going to be buying jack stands and I would recommend the same just cause it feels a little scary to know that the car is being held up by plastic. But basically, once you got your car mounted up, uh, you're gonna wanna be able to open up the hood and get all that stuff sorted out and to pop open the hood on the 2013 x3 we just have a latch on the driver's side so just pull open that latch and it'll pop the hood you'll hear like a clunk noise now when you're looking straight onto the car on the right side there's a lever that you're going to want to pull towards you this basically unlocks the hood and you basically can open it up after that. So once you got your hood open, you're gonna wanna create airflow uh, so that the oil can drain when you take out the drain plug. You're gonna wanna open the oil cap. And then a tip I found online is that you wanna also loosen the oil filter cap. This way it allows air to go through the filter and you won't have to drip as much oil when you take that filter out. Looking at this filter, you can tell it's a plastic housing and I had no idea how to open it. So the tool that you need to purchase is this 86 millimeter like filter wrench cap. And that way you can use a socket to loosen your filter. But basically it's just a tool that helps you open up your oil filter. And I'll put links of that down below as well. So once you've loosened your oil filter, you don't have to take it all the way out. You just basically want it to be loosened so the air can get in and when you're draining, it'll drain that as well. So now that we have the oil cap taken off and the filter cap, uh, we can basically start getting underneath the car. And before you start doing everything, it's always nice to put on a pair of gloves to make sure that you can protect your skin from the engine oil and make cleanup a lot easier. So we need to get into the drain plug and the drain plug is really far into the car. It's basically behind the front wheel of the BMW. And you'll see that there's an access panel here. It makes it pretty obvious to see what you're supposed to take out and what you need to take out with this are two eight millimeter bolts. So just using a socket and the eight millimeter socket head, uh, you can loosen those bolts and they'll come out right out. Underneath that, you'll find the drain plug. I think the drain plug is a 17 millimeter socket, but I'll make sure that I put the right measurements over here. Make sure that you got a cash pan underneath because you don't want that oil going everywhere. So basically I want to make sure I can line up the drain plug as straight as possible because the catch pan only has such a limited hole. And then I just basically took out the drain plug and let the engine oil drain. Yeah. And then from the tips that I've learned online, we can make the most of our time by replacing the crush washer. The engine oil filter that we purchased comes with the replacement for the crush washer and the engine oil filter O-rings. So we're gonna replace all of those. I don't know if this is a thing, but I've used the brake cleaner to spray it off to make sure that all the oil came off and then I just pat it dry with a bounty. The crush washer is super easy to replace. You basically just take it off of the drain plug and put the new one on. So now that we've replaced the crush washer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the engine oil filter. We've already loosened the oil filter cap, but it, once again, if you haven't done that yet, it's the 86 millimeter with the 16 flute wrench cap and you just loosen it. And that way you can take out the engine oil filter cap. Uh, if you didn't loosen it prior, there would be a lot of oil dripping, but because we did it, there wasn't too much oil dripping out of the cap. But just in case, a lot of people recommended going in with a plastic bag so that you can catch the engine oil when you were taking out the filter. Take it out, flip it upside down to prevent any of the oil dripping out and we're gonna bring it over here to change out our engine oil filter. The best thing to do is make sure that the filter that you purchased is the right size. So just take a look at it, put them side by side, make sure that the same size has the same coating and then you're good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the O-ring. So you just gotta take that filter out and then we're gonna take out these O-rings. Just trying to use a flathead 
and it eventually snapped and broke off so I guess it's okay because we had the right parts. Ideally you'd want to take the pick so that the o-rings can come out easily. The bigger one comes out pretty easily. Anyways now that we got these o-rings out we're gonna put the new ones on. Putting the small one on you just gotta force it onto the top and there's a little ledge that you can put the o-ring on. Same thing for the bigger one you take the ring out and you just put it straight through and there will be a ledge where you can put it in. It doesn't go all the way to the bottom. It's got a little bit of a space before the bottom. Once you've replaced your O-rings, you can put in the new filter and you just put it in and it'll slide right on. It requires a little force, but you just push it in and you'll hear a little click. And that's how you know you got the oil filter on correctly. Now that we have all of our pieces ready and the engine oil has drained, we'll bring the drain plug with the new crush washer and just screw it back onto the drain plug. I pretty much hand tightened it all as much as I could. And then I took my 17 mm meter socket just to tighten it up a little bit more. I think the exact measurements are 25 newton meters but I just went for a couple clicks because I didn't want to over tighten the drain plug. Once the drain plug was secure I took some brake cleaner just to clean off the excess oil and then I just took a bounty to wipe it off to make sure it was nice and clean. Next up we just put the access panel back on. There's just these plastic bits that you want to secure onto the ledge and then swoop it back in. Take those two screws and screw them back on with the 8 millimeter socket and then we're good to go. Now that the drain plug is on, we're secure. There's not gonna be any more engine oil draining. Uh, we're gonna put our filter back on. Another tip I found online was making sure that you put engine oil around the filter so that you can make sure that it comes back out easier. Uh, some people actually pour it on the filter. I didn't really know what to do, so I kind of just did a little bit of both. And then I put the filter back on to the engine. I tried to hand tighten as much as possible but it's actually pretty difficult to do so with the wrench cap and the socket it's easier to tighten it. There is an exact measurement but my socket set doesn't have a measurement for the uh like the impact wrench or whatever it is. So it might be something I need to purchase in the future. I believe it's 25 Newton meters. Next, all you gotta do is fill in the engine oil. Now we can actually take off the cap and basically put a funnel to fill in the engine oil. My brother-in-law uses Liquid Molly for engine oil on his BMWs. This is the Liquid Molly 5W40. So uh, I just made sure it was compatible with my car and used that as well. And I've never used this engine oil before. So it was a little confusing on how to open it. There'll be these two flaps that you just gotta pull up and you can just pull that out. It basically makes it a spout. Once you pull those two things out, there'll be another cap that you can just take off and you use that to pour out the engine oil. So I just poured the engine oil through the funnel and because there's no clear answer on how much engine oil this car needs online, so I just decided it would be best to just use one bottle and then add more if needed. So we basically used that whole engine oil bottle. I closed off the engine cap, took all the pieces out and just closed the hood. I drove the car off the Rhino ramps and just took it for a spin to warm up the engine oil. Then when I came back, I made sure we were on a flat level and then I measured our engine oil. Something that really tripped me out is I didn't realize there was no dipstick on the BMW and you actually have to measure it using the in-car controls. Um, so that was a little bit interesting, but you basically just scroll through the menu, you hit vehicle status, you click engine oil and you gotta make sure you're on a flat level and click measure engine oil. The engine oil measurement checked out so I could reset the service light. And to do so, there's a little button on the bottom left corner and you just gotta hold that for five seconds. You scroll through until you see the engine oil and you'll see a reset is possible. And to reset it, you just basically hold it for three seconds. It'll ask you if you wanna reset and you hold it again for another three seconds. And then after that, it'll reset the service light. I was super surprised to find out they don't tell you to change your engine oil in one year or 20,000 kilometers. And to me, that just seems ridiculously insane. Uh, so I asked my brother-in-law and he'd recommend every six months. That's what we're gonna be doing moving forward. We set up the engine oil, reset the filter, make sure the measurements were all good. And I guess that's everything we need to do for the engine oil filter change. Anyways, it was super interesting to be able to learn how to do all of that. Let me know if that helped you guys. If you guys got more tips let me know so i can make sure i implement them next time but thanks so much for watching this video i'll catch you guys in the next one bye guys